Stitch.com. Thanks for joining me today. If you've ever wondered what I do with some of the items that I purchased from my hauls, here's the first video of my What Did Candia Do With All That Stuff series. Remember my hauls from Foreman Mills? It included super deals on decorative hat boxes. They are normally sold in the large chain craft stores as much as $12.99 and I was able to get the same hat boxes for $1.50 through $3.00. The suitcase boxes were included in that haul as well. Here's what I did to transform them. I'll start with the smallest out of this set of three. This one was marked down to $2.99 and I got it for $1.50. This one would normally be sold in the large chain craft stores at $9.99. I didn't alter this one, I just used it to store some items that I got from the Thrift Addiction. Actually, I'll show you this because this was actually a little haul as well. I'll sneak another little haul in this video. These doorknobs. Actually, they're not doorknobs. They're dresser pulls. Dresser knobs, actually. Real wood. Brass trimming. Came with the screws as well. Would normally be sold in the regular de store or even department store or one of the home improvement stores between uh, $3 and $5. I got 10 for $5.99. And I bought others that were still in the pack, absolutely brand new, for $0.59. Cent. So I bought, bought a bunch of those. And the Thrift Addiction is actually located here in uh, Stroudsburg in uh, Mount Pocono, I'm sorry, in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. And it's a little store, uh, the young lady's name that owns it and runs it is, her name is Megan. She's absolutely adorable, very polite. Um, and she always have a bunch of things. Every time I go into the store, there is always something new. Um, she has really good prices, and she's also on Facebook. I'll put the information down below so you can check it out. And uh, I'm not sure if she have a website or if she's getting a website, but you never know. With a lot of views and encouragement, maybe she can make that happen. The Thrift Addiction is also a new, a new uh, business as well, so you never know. As things start to unfold, uh, maybe she will incorporate that. I don't even think that the business is three months old yet, but I know that she is doing well. She gets a lot of business from me, so hopefully after you all see my videos and some of the things that I've gotten from her, I'm going to do a video just on the things that I've gotten from the Thrift Addiction. You'll actually be encouraged and inspired to shop there as well. But back to this haul and what I did with my haul actually with this haul this one was a suitcase box that I did get for a dollar fifty I didn't do anything to alter it I just left it so I could store the dresser pulls that I purchased from the thrift addiction with the next size up this was the medium size uh, suitcase box out of this set of three and this one was $3.99, marked down to $2. You see how I made this divider? Let me show you some of the things that I actually put in here to keep it all together. I want to take it out so you can actually see what I did here. This I used foam board, the same kind of foam board that your kids may use for science projects. 
and I just simply took the measurements from here at the bottom to here and from here to here and then I cut it out in uh, three different compartments that I wanted to make here so I cut two pieces and hot glued it on the side here the side here and the bottom I didn't put any glue at the top because I knew that it would close and I didn't want it to stick there then I just simply measured the width from this part to this part added some glue here and some glue inside and the glue inside there as well and I stuck it in so a nice snugly fit this foam board is normally sold at $2.99 but you can often find it on clearance or you can often find it on sale at two for three dollars and they're large uh, foam board strips I mean they're, they're really big and it's nice and firm it has a, a, a thickness to it and um, it, it, it does the job. It does the job very nicely, and you can do it yourself. And you can do this to drawers as well. So this works out, whereas I was able to separate some of my little embellishments and stickers that I have. And the best part about it is I still have a lot of room for growth because I'm always shopping. That was actually one of the most important things to me that I don't just store things because I didn't want things packed in. I wanted to be able to have room for growth for my other hauls in the future. And this is the largest out of the three suitcase boxes that you can get that to see that so you see with the dividers here I did something a little bit different and I'll take it out so you can actually see what I did and if you notice I didn't make it all pretty and fancy because this is my personal uh, stash here so the only thing that I did was make it functional. It didn't have to be pretty, but it needed to be functional. Now, if this was something that I was going to use during my arts and craft classes, then it, I probably would have spent a little bit more time on it. Once again, I use the foam board because once again, you get the foam board on sale at two for three dollars or even one at two ninety nine and it's a large piece of foam board you can cut it into all of these little small pieces and it can go a long way here with this decorative uh, suitcase box what I did was I made one large area and then the small areas on the side because I have things like uh, this that I didn't want to necessarily take it apart I could have taken it out the case but it just fits in there like this also I got this from the thrift addiction by the way but anyways so with the frames I was able to just kind of put it in here and it works so this is the frame area and then I have these uh, clothes pins and because it's also like a clip, I just can put that here. And then this. Some more frames. Actually, we'll put that there because I do have a lot of clothespins. And I close it. So you see, that works. Let me show you what I did with the round decorative hat boxes. I'll see you in one second. I really was able to make a lot of good use out of the large decorative hat boxes that I got from Foreman Mills. For starters, remember those dresser pulls that I just showed you? What I did was I punched holes inside of the top, the lid, and I took the screws that came with the dresser pulls, put them through, and screwed them. Then I hot glued the screws and then I placed buttons just for a decorative finish.
but you don't have to place uh, buttons on it. No one's going to see it. The glue would have been just fine. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even put glue. I'm sorry, I didn't put buttons on all of them because then I kind of felt like I was wasting buttons. It's not like I'm giving these as a gift or, like I said, I don't use my, my personal stash for my craft lessons. So the only person that's going to see this would be me. So the buttons may not be necessary. You don't have to impress yourself by using your little embellishments and stuff. But anyways, back to uh, the uh, the handles. What I wanted to do with the uh, dresser pulls was make hat boxes with handles because when it's closed, I didn't want to have to fight to try to try to uh, take this off. And I'm a girly girl. I always have a nice, you know, manicure, and I don't want to risk chipping trying to struggle with getting the top off of it is you know bad enough that I'm painting and sewing and crafting and my hands take a beat and I didn't want to purposely do something that would chip one of my nails so using these 59 cent dresser pulls works perfectly fine I could simply pull it and to reveal what I did with the remaining part of the foam board that I had purchased on sale at two for three dollars. What I used here is these paper flowers. I normally glimmer mist these. I make my own glimmer mist and what I did was I included the glimmer mist that I got from my AC Mall haul at one cent here. I got a bunch of them and the one that they were on sale at Super Clarence was the silvery, shimmery kind and the pearlescence, which also have a whole bunch of glitter to it. So I already started making some, and then the ones that I made, I actually store here. And then I also have a compartment to store some eyeshadow that I can brush with the flowers. And I bought a bunch of these, so... I kind of separated all of them and then I have them here. This box is much larger in height, so the divided drawers, or uh, the areas rather, uh, rather, the sections here, are much deeper. This works perfectly fine. Once again, I'm the only one that's going to be using this. so. It's not necessarily pretty, but it's definitely functional. If you are considering purchasing dresser pulls and putting them on top of a lid, such as a decorative hot hat box, you want to make sure that it's super secure. What I did here was not only glue, um, what, what I did was not only punch holes in them, but I also glued them down under here and underneath. Now this is the largest box out of all the boxes that I purchased. Once again, I added that dresser pull that I got from the Thrift Addiction at 59 cent. And what I was explaining before, actually I have it upside down. What I was explaining before is how to secure it. I put glue underneath the dresser pull here and also put it on top of the screw. Now this is one of the boxes that I didn't use the buttons to make it a nice pretty fancy finish because I realized that it wasn't necessary. But I just want to kind of get a little closer on so you can see exactly how it looks. Not only is the dresser pull screwed in, but it's also have like a little cap on it of glue cap that I pulled just to kind of keep that nail there so it's not wobbly here and it's not wobbly here. So when I'm pulling, even if, you know, the box starts to constrict because of the, the, the environment, whether it's heated or cool environment in my studio, uh, I can still pull it without having to struggle on tugging it from the sides here. Now, I really had a lot of fun with this, this box. This box houses some of my wedding supplies for scrapbooking, card making, and anything that I'm else that I'm going to use. Now I do have a bunch of these because I do have different little elements, but I wanted to show you what I did here. Because it's a lot of stuff, I won't take everything out, but you can get an idea of what I did just by looking closely. So 
here's what we'll do. I'll just move it around a little bit so you can see. So I separated. You know what? I am going to take it out. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, I'm back. So what I was showing you was what I did What this large decorative hat box. This was the largest out of all of them that I bought. This one was purchased at 50% off of $5.99. So this was one of the $3 boxes. This box would normally be sold for $12.99, $14.99 even at the large craft chain stores. And if you don't believe me, go into their section. It's normally next to their Jet Max or um, their little drawers and organizer um, department. Okay, so I used the dresser pole that I was telling you about that I purchased from the Thrift Addiction. And these are regular dresser poles. And I put glue under the inside here, screwed it with the screws that came in, and then came with the dresser poles, and then added glue on top of it for stability. And then with the foam board, I cut it into little sections and then glued it accordingly. So you see, I made a bunch of little departments that were different sizes for the different elements. And then I have a nice little area. I just wanted to show you this because if you're going to take the time out to watch one of my videos, I want to thank you for that and I want to make sure that I at least take the time to show you something properly. So I appreciate that. So I apologize for being a little lazy in the last segment. But I wanted to uh, make it up to you and show you exactly what I did here. And hopefully you can get an idea of what can work for yourself. Now, I also wanted to show you this. Let me just get it into the camera. If you notice the height, this is high up. But then this is kind of lower down. This will give me the ability to reach in there and not bump up against this. But then this provides like a wall so things don't spill out on things that I have a lot of. So I was very creative and once again this is not necessarily the prettiest thing but it is definitely functional and because this is my own personal hat box that I'm using as storage in my embroidery studio and not in my crafting lessons with my students I didn't necessarily have to cover it with um, scrapbook paper or anything I just simply filed it down a little bit with the regular nail file just to uh, you know make it a little bit smooth because it's not going to have rough edges remember it is foam board so there are no sharp or rough edges it just kind of look rough but it won't be rough um, and I just simply glued it with the regular hot glue gun and it works Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me once again in the first video of my What Did Candia Do With All That Stuff series. There will be plenty of videos for this series to come as I continue to do my hauls. And I do share aways and giveaways. And I am super excited because I'm almost at 50 subscribers. And once I reach 50 subscribers, I will do a Michael's $2 grab bag giveaway. Also, in the future, I plan to introduce something called a share away. You've probably heard me mention it, but I want to take the opportunity just to kind of tell you what it is. When I go into the stores and I find these super, super deals, when I buy one for me, I'll buy some for you. So whatever I buy myself, I'll buy you. And if you would like to enter when I'm doing a share away, simply make sure that I have your information or uh, send it to me uh, via email or inbox. My email address is candia at ostitch.com and you can simply inbox me on YouTube. Your information will never be sold or shared and it will not be used for solicitation purposes. So you don't have to worry about receiving postcards or junk mail from me as I will only use it if you would like to participate in a share away giveaway contest or drawing that I may be having on YouTube. Thank you so much once again, and you can also find some of my items, gift baskets, which are personalized and customized on www.ostitch.com. 
And if you have an idea that you would like to develop, simply call me toll free at one 877 553-5400. Once again, that is a toll-free number at 1-877-553-5400. My embroidery studio is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks so much again for watching. Please subscribe below as I will sub back and I will see you next time.